Jiggy cat on a damn feeling spree. This is not good, so and you can't mimic my energy. 100 round drum and be hanging like a center. Hello, everyone. This is Nagato's Revenge. Hope you guys are having a great day for today. With that being out of the way, today I'm going to be showcasing on how to install Audible version 0.6 onto your PlayStation Classic. And if you guys have been watching my older content, and y'all probably know that I've uploaded. A tutorial on how to hack your PlayStation Classic using BleemSync. With AutoBleem, it's way much easier than you know setting up BleemSync. Uh, with this, it may take 10 minutes and just to add your game, but essentially this is the easiest method far by now on how to hack your PlayStation Classic. But with that being stated out the way, if you guys can please follow my social medias, y'all, so you guys will know all the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel. And as well, if you do need some help or you just want to meet new people. Scene. I have an official Discord that y'all guys can join via here. You can either look in the description below to join there, or you can just type in the link via your URL bar, and then it will hyperlink you to the official Discord. With that being stated out the way, if you do want to support my channel in any shape or form, you can feel free to donate via my PayPal, and any of that money that you give will for donations will be used in my PayPal will help me out via my channel to help me buy like you know. Any uh, recording stuff, uh, a new microphone, um, maybe a new console so I could showcase that and how to mod that or jailbreak this on this channel. But with all that stuff stated out the way, I'm going to go ahead and state the prerequisites and things you'll need for this video. So first things first, of course, you need a PlayStation Classic. You'll also need a USB stick that is formatted to SATA 2 and labeled as Sony in all caps. I noticed um, maybe some USB sticks may not work. I'm not too sure. Probably the to uh, auto bleam is way better than it used to be um, just I'll have a link in the description below on the USB I use um, but most USBs usually work but of course if it's like USB from Sony it's down bound to work but with that being stated as well you need the latest version of auto bleam you also need any game that is an old game that is either formatted to a .exe file or is in a .exe format as well you need a USB stick to power up your console and that's as well, before we even get started on the PC portion of this video, I just want to state some tips and reminders for basically installing AutoBleam. So you are able to transfer over your RetroArch and also your previous game to your PC to here. Um, so you can just drag and drop via with your USB. And I also highly recommend to use the .pdq version formats of your PS1 games, only due to the fact that they are smaller in size due to compressing the .pbp files with your portables and as well uh, for games like Final Fantasy 7 or multi disc based games uh, the .pvp files are compact into one file install instead of like installing those multi disc bin and queue files that's why I prefer the .pvp file so if you have like I don't know 60 games or 30 or 40 games and they're all .pvp format you can all put them into one thing um, as well, I just want to list some benefits on why owning a modded PlayStation Classic will maybe, you know, interest you in any shape or form. You're able to create your own PlayStation 1 library and add your favorite classics. So, as many of you guys know, the PlayStation 1 Classic did horrible in sales due to, you know, the games and also how high the price was compared to, you know, the NES Classic. And even NES Classic had way better lineup than the uh, PlayStation 1. Um, you know, from that standpoint, as well, you can emulate other systems via using the power of RetroArch um, with your PlayStation Classic. So I have a video, I'll probably link it right now on how to run Nintendo DS games, for example, with RetroArch. I know you can run uh, PSP games. Of course, you know, the SNES, NES, and all those type of games. You're able to even enable cheats in your PlayStation 1 titles as well and enable settings to just improve overall your official gameplay on your PlayStation Classic. Uh, but with that being stated out the way as well, I just want to give a special thanks out to the developers for uh, AutoBleam for making this as well. And I just want to give a big shout out to all my fans and subscribers who've been supporting me so far. With that being stated out the way, we could go ahead and get started on this tutorial. Meet you guys back on the PC.
Alright guys, so assuming that you did follow all the prerequisites as stated in the intro, we could go ahead and get started on the PC portion of this tutorial. So as shown here, I have all of my files that I'm going to be showcasing on how to set this up. So here is my autobleam full.zip file. I just extracted it. So here's the folder right here. So it's the same contents from here. I'll have a link in the description for all of the autobleam files, of course. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag that on the side here since it's irrelevant at this moment but of course we already have our auto bleam content so this is what it should look like onto your desktop and then of course I have my game of choice so I'm using Gran Turismo the original one for uh, PlayStation 1 and then if I go into my contents for this folder as you remember me stating in the intro my file is a eboot.pbp format so if I go ahead and highlight over this file you can see that um, it's 433 megabytes I guess or I assume that the original Gran Turismo if I do recall is like 600 and something megabytes for the PlayStation 1 but as a pbp file it's compressed that's why i have the shorter file size that's why i did recommend so you could add on you know as many games as you want with due to a fault smaller uh, file size you can add more that way rather than trying to waste your drive installing bin and queue formats as well with that being stated out the way we need to go ahead and plug in our usb drive to our pc and then we need to go ahead and verify that our usb drive is labeled sony and that it's on fat32 so the way how we do that is just right click over our drive with our mouse and go to our properties and then as shown here where i'm hovering at you can see my file system is fat32 if your thing states that it's on xfat or ntfs we're going to have to change it so we're on the same page and so that the auto bleam uh sync cut or basically hack can work so what we need to do now is if you have any important documents on your uh, usb flash drive go ahead and back it up because anytime you reformat your usb drive it basically um wipes your drive and your data clean off of it so assuming that you already backed up your usb drive or you just got this usb drive from somewhere and it's new and you don't care uh reformatting we could go ahead and get started from doing this process right now so what we're going to do is go to our usb USB drive so make sure you do highlight the other one if you do uh, have you know multiple USB drives or hard drives on your computer and what we need to do is go into our properties excuse me not our properties we need to right click and go to format and then we're going to get this little window right here make sure your window right here is on the highest capacity size uh, where it says file system make sure if it's on NTFS or XFAT that it's on FAT32 for your allocation unit size make sure it states that it's on default allocation size and it's very important for this part that you label your uh, USB drive into capital letters as Sony so I'm just going to go ahead and you know showcase that on the screen again so just type in Sony and then where it says format options go ahead and make sure that this is toggled and it's on quick format and then you can go ahead and start the process and then you're going to go ahead and hit OK and it was just a little disclaimer stating that um, if you reformat this hard drive, it's just going to wipe your data clean. It's not going to take too long, uh, depending on how big your um, USB drive is. But you'll get another little window notification stating that the format has been completed. And then all you would have to do is just go ahead and hit OK from that process. And then what we need to do is go back into our Windows folder right here. Go into our Sony G drive and then just verify that our thing is formatted to FAT32. So once you are verified that your USB is now on FAT32, we could go ahead and transfer our contents over to our basically our USB. So we're going to go into our auto beam folder, take all of our contents in this and just drag and drop to our Sony folder right here, aka our basically to the root of our USB drive. So once we have that as well, we're going to go ahead and minimize this Refinky. out from here. And then with our game of choice, what we're going to do is go ahead and take our game and then we just go ahead and drag and drop it also to the root of the usb file so once our both our contents are done uh copying over what i'm going to do here in a second is showcase on the next step what we need to do on the pc so our game could show up onto our um, playstation classic so I'll meet you guys once this process is fully finished i'm um, doing this thing a few moments later Drop 
our um, game or basically our game of choice into the games folder and well what we need to do now is just go ahead and label this to our game's title so I already know this is Gran Turismo so what I'm gonna do here is just create a new folder and label my game as Gran Turismo as shown here and then just go ahead and put my BenaQ file here if I had one or your eboo.pvp file into your game folder so for example if I was doing Crash Bandicoot or what I need to do is just basically just label it as Crash Bandicoot and then just go ahead and dump my game into this folder but since I'm only doing Gran Turismo that's how basically it's set up so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and transfer over to our PlayStation Classic and I'm gonna show you guys on how to set that up and then we're gonna go ahead and set up auto bleam onto our PlayStation Classic so I'll meet you guys back on to the Classic Hello guys, it's me Nagato. Did you enjoy this video so far? If you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for my channel for more daily content just like this. Thank you guys for watching. Alrighty guys, so once you're on your PlayStation Classic, make sure you plug into your USB in first into the second slot of your PlayStation Classic. Then you can plug your HDMI in second. And then last but not least, plug in your USB power cable and then wait for your PlayStation Classic to basically boot up. Then you're free to go ahead and plug in your system and turn it on. Alrighty guys, so once you're back onto your PlayStation Classic and now you should have it turned on, you should basically see the Auto Bleam basically GUI or the UI menu. So once you added your games, you probably will have something that states games change, please press X to scan. So just go ahead and do that. Depending on how many games you already have on your PlayStation Classic, it may take a while. But since I only had one game as shown here, um, Gran Turismo only took a little while to load so all you would have to do now is to try to see your games is to press X and now if we scroll all the way to our game of choice we should basically see uh, Gran Turismo right here so here is Gran Turismo and if you guys know Gran Turismo never uh, actually came out on the PlayStation Classic but all you would have to do is just go ahead and hit X and then it will boot into the game as normal so here is Gran Turismo running on the PlayStation Classic using um, auto bleam and some key features to uh, note as well um while playing if you hit I believe I think the reset button it'll take you back out to uh, auto bleam but yeah essentially this is how you add games and hack your PlayStation classic on the latest version of auto bleam if you guys did enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like and then comment down below if you have any questions you can feel free to join my discord with that being said my name is nagato and i'm signing out peace and thank you nice and silky smooth